All right, so for problem 16, we have this function, square root of x plus y squared equals xy plus 2. And we're trying to find the derivative with respect to x at a point, 4, 0. So this is an example where we're going to use implicit differentiation. And as long as you remember that it's pretty much just different, differentiating the same way you always do. But whenever you differentiate y, you got to multiply it by dy dx. It's actually not that hard. So for this, we take the derivative of the square root of x. The square root of x is the same as x to the 1 half power. So then we have 1 half x to the negative 1 half power plus the derivative of y squared, 2y. And then here we multiply by dy dx is equal to the derivative of xy. So this is, we're going to take the derivative using the product rule. So the derivative of x is one, keep the y constant, plus now we keep the x constant. The derivative of y is just one. And then we, here we multiply by dy dx. And the derivative of two is just zero. We don't have to do anything or we can just put plus zero. And then um, at this point, you want to basically just solve for dy dx and then plug in four zero. So treat dy dx like it's a variable. Um, so let me, I'm going to subtract this whole thing to the left. And I'm going to bring, bring, oh I'm going to bring, let's go for bringing dy dx to the left. So I'm going to take away this to, and bring it to the left. So then I have, so then I have, and I'm going to move this, I'm going to put, to make this a little cleaner. I'm going to go two times dy mm -hmm. dx plus or minus this to minus x times dy dx. And then this, let me see my pen right here. So I'm gonna keep the y and the x on, on I'm gonna keep the y, I mean, on the right side. So we have equal to y. And then I'm gonna subtract this whole thing. So then on the right side, I'm gonna have minus one half x to the negative one half. And then here, I just factor out the dy dx. So dy dx times 2y minus x equals y minus 1 half. And x to the negative 1 half is the same as the square root of x in the denominator. And now I just divide by this thing. So literally, like, divide by that whole thing. Divide both sides by 2y minus x. That cancels. And then uh, let me see if I have room. I can fit it over here, hopefully. Two, dy dx will get y minus 1 half over the square root of x. All over 2y minus x. And then now I just plug in 4 for x and 0 for y. And then. I'll get that dy dx will be plug in zero in for y and zero minus one over two times the square root of four. So one over two times two. So minus one fourth on top. Zero in for y there. So it's a zero minus four in the denominator. So I just have negative one fourth over negative four. So then this just gives me positive or positive one over 16, because it's the same as, let me just write it. It's the same as one fourth times the reciprocal of four, which is one fourth. The so one sixteenth will be, will be my answer. So the answer is B. All right, moving on to number 17. Okay, here we have R is going to be the region bounded by the graphs of y equals 2x and y equals x squared. We want to find the area of x, or sorry, the area of R. So this is just going to be using the, um, the, the integral to, to represent what area is being trapped by, between these two lines. 
So y equals 2x is, you know, going to be a linear equation. y equals x squared, we know, we should know that's parabola. That's, that's my y equals x squared. So we're going to be looking for this region. We know the intersect at 0 here. And then over here, it's going to be at, let's see, it's going to be, looks like 2, 0. You can always just, you know, set them equal if you're a little, um, if you can't, if you're a little like uncertain and then just solve for X, they're never going to make it a, a, like a hard, complicated, like value to find. Like this is, this is not on what they're testing. What they're testing now is that you recognize that this will be the, that R will be equal to the integral from zero to two where you have the top function, which is 2x minus the parabola function, or the x squared. That, so then we integrate this. And so then we just do our antiderivative rule, 2x squared over 2, those twos cancel minus x cubed over three, and we're integrating from zero to two. So then we plug in two, so we have four minus eight thirds minus, plug it in zero, it's just zero, zero. So it's really just four minus eight thirds or 12 thirds, 12 thirds minus eight thirds, which will just give us four thirds. The answer will be B. All right, problem 18. All right, so now here we have um, the a rate of change or, or related rates problem. And so we have a block of ice in the shape of a cube uni melts uniformly, maintaining its shape. The volume of a cube given its side length is given by the formula V equals S cubed. At the moment, S equals two inches. The volume of the cube is decreasing at a rate of five, in five cubic inches per minute. What is the rate of change of the side length of the cube with respect to time in inches per minute at the moment when S equals two inches? These always usually sound complicated. Um, and they're not, I mean, they, I mean, they, they, I, students struggle with these, I think, because they see this long, like, paragraph, and then they, like, freak out because they see you spend a minute reading it. Um, just always remember that it's really, it's, it's really just using the chain rule correctly, and, um, and don't get, like, don't overthink, like, don't overthink what you got to do, I guess. But let me just let me just go through. So, so the volume here is is v. We have v equals x cubed. We're told that the volume at the moment when s equals two inches, that the volume is decreasing at a rate of five cubic inches per per minute. So we can say dv dt equals negative five, and that's going to be when s equals two. So we want to find first the derivative for v, just in general. So dv dt is going to be 3s squared. But remember, like we um, have basically a, um, the chain rule that we're going to use, or it's because, or kind of implicit differentiation. Remember, in related rates, you're going to basically always have to take one of the function's derivatives with respect to time. I guess that's a good way to remember. Like, time is always independent of everything, so you're going to always have to find a derivative with respect to it. So in this case, it will be ds dt. And then we just basically plug and chug, really. There's really not too much more to it, so we, um, we're solving for... If so we're solving for ds dt when dv dt equals negative five, so we said negative five equals to three 
And when s equals two, so we plug two into there, so two squared times ds dt. And that's just three times four, so it's 12. So then this is negative five twelfths so is equal to ds dt. And our answer will be A, not a problem. All right, number 19. Okay, so um, we got, let G be the function given by, oh yeah, this was a typo, let me fix that. Let F be the function given by the, by F of X is equal to this integral. And we want to find the X coordinate of the point of inflection of the graph of F. So first let's remember, well, a couple things. Um, like when we're talking about an integral where you have one of the endpoints as a variable, there's either going to be, the, the problem is either going to be requiring you to, to um, take the derivative but when, and when you and when you take the derivative of the integral, it just it just basically becomes the inside, or you're just going to plug the numbers straight up in. Um, now, when we're talking about inflection points, we want to find when the second derivative is equal to zero. That's how we can find the inflection point. So we have to find the derivative, and then we have to find the derivative again. So we first find f prime of x. If we're taking the derivative of the integral, all that does is cancel out the integral operation. And we're just left with the integrand or whatever is on the inside. Because differentiating on differentiating and integrating are basically inverse functions. So they undo each other. It's like adding and subtracting. If you were to add five and then subtract five, nothing happened. It's like nothing happened. So then now we take the derivative of this. So we have the second derivative. It's just my, it's three minus 12 T. And then here we just set this equal to zero and solve. And then we'll get that 12, two, three, whoops, 12, I don't want to confuse, 12 T equals three. So then T is just going to be three twelfths or one fourth. And so our answer is B. For 20, oh, this one, just the integral. Um, just know your derivatives and know your antiderivatives, but that just really involves you knowing your derivatives. So if we have an integral, that means we have the derivative of a function and if we want to go back, we're just going back to the function. So we want to think of what function has the derivative of the sine of x. And that'll be negative cosine of x. And since we have a 3x on the inside, we just make sure to do the opposite of what we would do if we were to um, take the derivative of this. Instead of multiply by 3, we divide by 3. So then this is simply the negative cosine of 3x over 3. And don't forget the constant. And then the answer will be problem D. And, re and remember, you can always check your answer, like check if your derivative is, check if like, your answer is correct by taking the derivative and you should go back to this. So it's always nice about those ones. So there we go. So let me know again, um, uh, if you have any questions on these, because sometimes I don't know if I'm going too fast or too slow. I want to make sure I don't over, over explain. Um, and please let me know if I didn't make any mistakes. I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm perfect. And um, there may just be some even like typos that I didn't even notice because again, this is just um, a, a test that was made by, um, but made by a teacher to, to make the questions very, very similar to the actual exam. But I'll see you guys in the next video.